Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we're going to be talking about Michael Knowles uh, and a leftist he's talking to about abortion. And all right, hey everybody, thanks for coming. Thanks for spending a little bit part of your day with me. I enjoy doing this. It's been a little while. Uh, of course, it was Thanksgiving a couple weeks ago. And last week, I was traveling for several days. I went up to Vermont. I preached in a chapel up there at a Baptist college and uh, kind of scoped out the area um, just to look at partnership with the college up there. It's a newer college within the last 10 years. Uh, the founding president uh, is still there. He's the one who invited me. He's actually been on the show, Mark Ballard, Dr. Mark Ballard. And um, yeah, just uh, there's just been a, there was a poll, I would say, you know, didn't God didn't say go to New England, you know, something like that, but just just an inward kind of tug. And I wanted to check it out and see how things are up there. There's a lot of need. So if you do need to go somewhere <laughs> or want to go somewhere, uh, New England's essential, New, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Maine. There's a lot of work, a lot of work that needs to be done. I'm a pastor. I'm a husband and a father. Uh, most of all, I'm a follower of Christ. Uh, I love Jesus because he loved me. He lo first loved me and he gave himself up for me uh, and for you, not just for me, uh, but for you and for the whole world, as the scripture says. Uh, but you have to grab it. You have to believe it by faith. You have to grasp this. You, you, it's not automatic. And so truth matters. And, and we're in this day and age where it's just we're so assaulted time and time again truth is under attack let's just say you know we hear probably headlines with that and videos and thumbnails and and, and posts on instagram and twitter and coffee i like light roast by the way if you're curious black although sometimes i'll do you know sugar and cream and everything but anyway um the truth is under attack and it's true that black coffee is the best coffee, and you can't attack that, but people do. Can you believe it? Joking aside, truth matters, and it's either it's either true is truth is is a thing that's absolute that can be grasped or not, right? And there might be some truths, like plural, but like there's not an absolute truth. And of course, you know, the old adage of, well, there's no absolute truth. So anyway, well, are you absolutely sure? <laughs> like, well, except for that absolute truth, right? And this is the problem that people have been assailing. And it's not new. And this is the whole point in this channel. I want to be an encouragement, uh, a pastoral encouragement, uh, a discerning encouragement, not just to say, oh, that's dumb. That's wrong. You're stupid. But to say, listen, this is how Christians, we should think about these things. If a non-believer uh, is thinking about these things and it's not quite squaring that the Bible, the Lord Jesus has the answer. God has the answer. The spirit, the triune Godhead lives within you and makes you free, sets you free. In fact, the truth sets you free. John tells us uh, among other places. And this matters, right? Because a lot of people say struggle with stuff. You know, they go from substance to substance, woman to woman, man to man, um, and they try and and do a number of things to quote unquote fill that you know God shaped hole in their heart, and there might be some theological issues with that. But at the end of the day, we are rebelling, and the rebelling doesn't ever satisfy us. And I love Augustine. He says, you know, I I was restless until I found my rest in Thee. My heart was restless, and sometimes it still can be restless even when you come to Christ, but it's far less so. Far less so, because you realize I've, I'm resting in my Savior. This is the whole Sabbath rest and why when you're a Christian, you actually do practice the Sabbath. Of course, it's just Jesus is the Sabbath because, well, that's what the Bible says. Uh, he's the Lord of the Sabbath. When you look at Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, many other places. So today we're looking at Michael Knowles and some leftist, some lady. Uh, and we're going to look at some scripture at the end. This is kind of what I try and do, the Contra Thoughts, this whole episode of, again, for those who are new, Kind of take an issue, either a video or something, uh, and 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 look at it, examine it, turn it over, be against it, and then be for it with with the scripture, with God's word. Because what else is there? We don't have anything else. Right? I, if the Bible is just man's opinion, you all just still have man's opinion. We don't have something contending better. It's not like 
Richard Dawkins work or Charles Darwin's work or, you know, Hitler's work or something like that. Oh, this is better than God's word because it's whatever. No, the Bible's man's opinion or <laughs> the Bible's not man's opinion. Although many people say that the Bible's God's word. So we're going to go with that. We're going to believe it by faith, just like people believe it not by faith. They'll say, oh, I lack faith. No, no. They're believing it that it's not because they want some evidence. They believe other things are more authoritative, namely their feelings, which we'll look at right now. So here's this gal. All right. We're going to just stop and go on this and see how it works for us. What the leading cause of death for pregnant people is? Pregnant people? Mm-hmm. Mothers? Women? If you'd like to call them mothers, not all. If you'd like to call them mothers. If you'd like to call them mothers. Um, yeah, I mean, they are mothers, though. Like, only women get pregnant. Just like only men can be pastors, Scripture says. Only women can get pregnant, Scripture says. Go, lo and behold, right? But this is, again, we have even churches, so-called, in the culture... In the West, namely in the West, uh, namely in, you know, they're not in underground China. They're not in communist China, <laughs> right? Uh, or, or Russia or Nigeria, where, you know, there's Christians dying literally every single day in Nigeria from extremists, Muslim extremists, mo mostly. Uh, you have churches, though. Oh, yeah. You know, women can be pastors. And, it's, and this is where it is. It starts with that. And then you have same-sex married pastors or, or celibate, and then you have trans, and then you have this, and then you have this whole destruction of truth. It's not just about baby killing. It's not just about uh, uh, pastors being this or that. It's about the destruction of the truth. Is the truth a foundation for reality or not? What is it? Right? What is it? Are these things important or not? Do these things matter or not? So she says, if you'd like to call them that. So she starts off the bat. It's only a two-minute video, less than two minutes. Interview's much longer, I'm sure. I'm not going to play the whole thing, of course. It's just a clip on Twitter. I'll put it in the description if you want. And it shows that all already she's already given up her authority. But she thinks she's actually superior, right? And we'll watch here in a moment a little bit more why. But all of them are mothers, but if you'd like to call them that. What are they if they're not mothers? They're pregnant people. What what people other than mothers are pregnant? Does it bother you to use inclusive language? Well, it's I, just interesting. I, I prefer to use precise language. It's interesting because you... <laughs> so notice that right there. I love Michael Knowles. He's probably my favorite. Shapiro and Walsh and some of the other guys. They're nice. They're, they're good. I like them. They're good for their own thing. Uh, Candace Owens, she's great. Sometimes she's too much, uh, personally. <laughs> but Michael Knowles is great. Because he's, he's witty and dry, but he's not like desert dry like Walsh. And again, I'm not trying to dismiss anybody. I'm very thankful for the Daily Wire. You know, I disagree with a few things they've done uh, here and there. And But they're pushing against the woke mob. They're pushing against the leftists. They have no problem calling a spade a spade, which is very good. It's far more than what Big Eva and many of these other uh, evangelical so-called, you know, kind of pussyfooting around and dancing this and playing footsie and, you know, soft-shoeing. No. Not in our day. Not when the leftists are like, yeah, yeah, baby killing. Absolutely. 100%. Baby killing. Yeah. Destruction of marriage. Absolutely. Yeah. Disrespect for marriage act, right? Open borders, free stuff, whatever. No. No. But this woman says, ah, if you want. And then, and then she shifts the argument in her moral superiority that, oh, does it bother you to use inclusive language? Does it really bother you? What is wrong with you? Everyone should be inclusive. Which, of course, just means be a leftist. It doesn't mean be inclusive of every thought because, well, there's two people. Two, right? A man and a woman who starkly disagree. Great production value, by the way. I love those chairs. Black background. Looks really cool. And they look... there. This is ami amicable. Amicable? Is that a word? This is friendly, right? Does it bother you, though, that you don't agree with me? No, it doesn't, actually. It should bother you, sweetheart, that it doesn't, the truth doesn't agree with you. I might have said that. He has a great answer, though. 
You come into this conversation, you know, trying to hold this moral superiority, but then I when I... No, I, when I, I try I use, to be moral when I can, but I... Right, but when I use inclusive language, which it only takes a couple extra syllables to use inclusive language. To include and who? it seems To include people who don't, you know, identify as women, but can become pregnant. So, like a person who's born a woman, and then identify... Real quick, um... A few extra syllables. That's, and this is the thing. This is how they always do this. You have to remember very clearly, if you know about schools, you know about uh, companies even, like Target, you know, super, super woke. But in 2008, they actually supported the um, um, traditional marriage Prop 8 in California. I'm from California originally. I was living there then. It was one of the, I guess the second election I voted in, 2008. And... Um, they supported Prop 8, meaning the definition of marriage. And it actually passed the 52%, even in California, even in 2008. Of course, it's far worse now. And that's where they took that court case and went with uh, one, I think, in Ohio and made the Obergefell case in 2015 to shove it down our throats. And then, you know, now they pass it, uh, which is what they should have done to begin with, uh, if, if, if that's what the senators want to do, uh, because we've, uh, quote unquote, elected them, then fine. But... They're, they're pushing, just slowly, and saying, oh, even then, we just want to get married. You know, it's no big deal. We just want to get married. And like, oh, yeah, two guys, two girls, I guess. But not polygamy. No, no, no. We're not talking about bestiality. We're not talking about pedophilia. We're not talking about any of that stuff. No, 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 no. We're just talking about two nice, kind, you know, men or two nice women getting married. Not three or four women, or a man and a horse and a woman, or anything like, no, 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 that's absolutely not. Yeah, except for what are we seeing now? I mean, there's already been, for several years, throuples. We see these other people who are doing all sorts of weird S&M things and identifying as dogs and frogs and babies and little girls. and It's just like, it doesn't stop. But the leftists slowly move the ball down the field, like smash mouth football. They don't, they don't do a Hail Mary touchdown, right? This is how conservatives has to, have to win. We have to just say, cut it off, start over, do something different. We're going a radical turn to the right. Okay? This is my right. Wedding finger. Right? Radical turn to the right. Not slow, slow, slow. Nobody drifts conservative. With only the exception, I think, of some folks who are already kind of conservative as a youth, but they're not really sure, and then they get more firmed in that when they get older. Right? There's plenty of leftist, liberal, crazy old people. Right. And there's plenty of terrible, bad, conservative old people, too. Don't get me wrong. But you don't generally drift slowly conservative. You drift left. Like a boat on the ocean with no anchor. She said, oh, only a few syllables. That's, that's all we want to do. What's the big deal? Just use the pronouns, man. What's the big deal? Well, lying is kind of a big deal. I don't, I don't use these because I'm lying. I'm not going to tell you that you're an elephant, or you're a bird, or you don't exist at all, or more importantly, that you're not made in God's image, that God doesn't care for you, that he sent his son into the world to save sinners, that the devil loves you more, right? Truth matters. Truth is far more, if, if we have to take hours to speak the truth versus a few moments you know, to use a few syllables. Well, what's the big deal? No, no, no. Take the hours because the truth is worth it. Wise as a man mm -hmm. and is pregnant. Yeah. So you're telling me that in order to be a moral person, this is good. I need to accept the idea that a man, someone who is born a man and looks like a man, can really become a woman. That's that's a, a prerequisite of my being a moral person. I mean, yes. To to me, it is because if you are trying to deny someone. Okay. To me, it is. Who are you? Ma'am, who are you? Are, are you the arbiter of truth? Are you the person who decides reality? You're the person who makes up right and wrong? Now sh and this is, this is where the arrogance of the left is so high. Because this is, this is something you'll see too. Is that people will think... Listen, you Christians, you think you're so sure. 
You think the Bible's God's word? You think Jesus is the only way? You think when you believe that the Holy Spirit comes upon you? Really? What about Buddhists? What about those in Africa? What about this? What about that? What about people 2,000 years ago? Right? Well, Romans 1, so you can answer with that. God has shown it to them. He's made it evident to them. But this woman is saying, listen, I get to determine the truth. I do. To me, it is. Well, sweetheart, you're just a woman. Just like this guy's just a man. And I'm just a man. And the, my wife is just a woman. And my children, and they're girls and one boy. We don't determine truth. And this is the crux. So when you're having a conversation with somebody, right? Somebody at work, somebody wherever. You're looking something and you've you maybe subjected yourself to watching CNN. Uh, for or even Fox uh, News or or some of these other things, you see a tweet or some weird post on Instagram, and you're like, "What? I don't understand." Know that what they're all they're doing is they're appealing to their own truth, which is no truth at all. Okay. Like you can't go to the bank and say, "Yeah, I'm I'm going to deposit." Or uh, excuse me, not deposit. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little flustered. You know, I'm gonna. This is the person at the bank. I, I'd like to take out, you know, $500,000 out of my account, please. You know, okay, put in your pen. Oh, sir, um, there's only $50 in your account. Oh, no, no, no. I identify as having $500,000 in there. So can you please just give that to me in hundreds unmarked, please? That'd be great. Briefcase is fine. Like the movies. Sir, you have $50. I can give you $50. No, no, no. I, I identify as having $500,000 in there. It's not going to work. And you think, well, that's not, that's silly, man. That's just a, that's a, that's a false dichotomy. That's a this. No, it's not. It's the exact same thing. Because all you're doing is lying about the reality that is because of your feelings. If someone feels like they can fly and then jump off a building, will they? No, they won't. They will go straight to the ground because they're human. They're not birds. Can't fly. Identifies a car. Let me go get my oil changed doesn't work right we can go on and on but for some reason this woman thinks well you know a man can be a woman a woman can be a man or no gender at all to me it is to me to me i don't care about you and your feelings okay i don't and you shouldn't care about my feelings <laughs> somebody might comment oh well, you're a bigot okay so are you you're a christophobe you're a freak you're scared about straight male and females. You're scared about traditional, standard, regular, natural marriage. You're scared about people raising godly children. You're scared about God judging you. And so you hide the truth. Suppress the truth in unrighteousness. ...of their identity and deny what their life experience is. And that doesn't seem like a moral stance to me. I want to be accepting and I want to respect people's life experiences and respect the way that they want to identify and respect the way that they want to present themselves to the world. Bronte, I would yes. like to... I Bronte? I don't know. Uh, okay, so his, his response is golden. Then we'll look at some scripture. Uh, what... Listen, are you catching it? Are you listening? Are you seeing what she's saying? It's all about me and this, and I want to respect. Why should we respect anybody? Just take an example. If Darwinian naturalistic evolution is true, we're all just animals, right? It's all just a bunch of chemicals bouncing around. If that's true, then you don't have any dignity. This woman, Michael Knowles, you viewer, you don't have any dignity. You don't have any worth. Nothing. Nothing. I don't. Nobody does. It's all subjective. It's all a struggle. Like old Adolf's book, My Struggle. Many, many others. The Struggle for Life. The Preservation of Favored Races, I think, is is, is Darwin's full book, uh, The Origin of Species. Look up the whole title. Pretty revealing. But if that's true, then there is no God. There is no right and wrong. There is no real standard for morality. Don't let someone trick you or steal from biblical faith. And say, oh, no, no, that's wrong. Based on what? What What is it wrong based on? She's stealing from Christianity. Say, we should be kind. Without saying it, she's saying, you know, Jesus was kind. Jesus accepted people. God made me this way. Quote, unquote. Right? 
Is that is that true? His response is really, really good here. And um, yeah, pretty fascinating. Let's see. Identify. I do identify, actually, mm -hmm. as the correct person on this issue of abortion. Okay. I identify as being correct and more correct than you on this issue. And I would just ask that you accept and affirm my uh, identity. <laughs> do you? Well, you are not a medical professional, and abortion and pregnancy no, is a medical concern. Identity. That's not your identity. That is my I promise you that's my identity. Okay, so... Okay, we live near train tracks. So we hear train. Um, okay, he identifies as more correct. If he can... If a man can say... Listen, if a woman can say, I was born a woman. I grew up as a little girl. I had dolls and Barbies and this and pink and long hair and braids and everything else. And at 25, she feels like, yeah, I, my life's been a little not what I expected. Maybe I'm a man. Society, you know, I can cut my hair. I can chop off my uh, privates and I can do this and that and take some hormones and uh, appear as a man, right? Obviously, your chromosomes haven't changed, which is a whole other thing about transhumanism and how they're trying to manipulate DNA and other things, but yeah. Um, she was made a woman by God. Okay. And this is really what it goes down to. They're denying their creator. Okay. They're denying <coughs> the Lord who bought them. In fact, I believe it's what Peter says. Um, talking about false prophets and things. Anyway, so this woman who feels like a man Hey, I, I'm going to vote for these people who affirm me. I'm going to hang out with people who affirm me. I'm going to go to places that affirm me. I'm going to look for the rainbow who affirm me, et cetera, et cetera, to make me feel right. Okay. I understand that inclination. The problem is it's removing the fact that God made this woman in a particular way, number one. Number two, that you are saying something about you that isn't true. Right? Like if I told you that I wasn't married, but I am. I've been married for several years. Well, is it true? I mean, could I, I mean, not could I, I will and should be able to do the same thing. Go to a restaurant, go to a bar, take out my wedding ring and, you know, talk to a lady. Hey, how are you? Oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. And strike up conversation and try and, you know, get with her, quote unquote. She might ask, oh, you're not married? Oh no, I'm not married. No, never got married. I'm identifying right there as not being married. It's the same thing doesn't matter. There's no statute of limitations. There's no sort of line or or time. I remember a comment months ago on a video, I think it was on YouTube, and it was uh, Germany had preference for, you know, like big German cities, preference for women closer parking spots, right? Again, this is the lie that they do. Well, women are this, women are this. Men can't have an opinion about abortion or so on and so forth. But at the same time, men can become women and better women. I mean, just look at sports, right? And so I commented on this video. I'm like, well, this is going to be great. When I go to the mall, if I'm ever in Germany, I'll just identify as a woman and walk right in, right? And, you know, people are like, oh, you know, good luck with that. You need, it takes a long time, somebody commented, to transition, to get hormones, to this, to that. And, of course, I commented back and says, no, it doesn't. All you have to do is say, I, me, I am the impetus of all truth. I am the foundation of reality. It doesn't take any time at all. This woman has zero credibility. Zero. And all the people, the politicians, the media, the woke mob who pushes this type of thing. There isn't like, well, you need to be this way for at least a year. Right? If Richard, me, I wanted to become a woman, and my church was open and accepting, and now they're going to have a woman pastor. Well, you still got to go through gender transition. You got to go to surgery. You got to get implants. You got to you know, shave your beard, you got to grow out your hair, you got to do all this other stuff, wear some makeup. This takes a long time. But it doesn't, though. That's the thing. And that's the lies that these people tell. One side will say, you know, it takes a long time. Da, 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 da. Over here, they say, just do whatever you want. I mean, stories abound with men going into women's bathrooms, women's locker rooms, women's changing rooms, taking pictures of girls and women. Oh, I identify as a woman, though. Even though it looks just like me, right? So this is the problem, again, where you have the shifting sand of man's opinion. It's not foundation, foundational on God's word and actual absolute truth. 
So he identifies as being right on this issue. Yeah, great. He can do that. It's his identity. Who is she to go back against it? Who are you, Bronda or whatever you are, whatever your name is, to judge Michael Knowles? Shame on you, bigot. Shame on you. Disgusting. You are not being tolerant. You are not being accepting. You're not being loving at all. Oh, you're not a medical professional. Oh, I would have said, I'm sorry, I forgot. I'm also a medical professional. And there are medical professionals, Christians, men and women, OBGYNs, people like that, general practitioners, pediatricians, who identify as being right on this issue. Philippians 4, very helpful here. Philippians 4, we can look at, if you can see it okay, be anxious. Let's flip this, there we go. Be anxious. Be not anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our hearts and our minds need to be guarded. Why? Because of sin, because of destruction, because of brokenness, because of the fallenness of ourselves, of the creation. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. It's kind of a big deal, isn't it? God of peace is with you. <clears throat> Notice the foundational. Notice these absolutes right there. Time and time again. This is why the Bible is vital. This is why we need it. Right? Like Otherwise, you're just lost in this sea of opinion. I'm not living like that. You shouldn't live like that either. Proverbs 10. Four, idle hands make one poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. He who gathers in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during the harvest is a disgraceful son. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence, like abortion, for example. The memory of the righteous is a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. Oh my goodness, isn't that true? Names abound that we could say are now rotting, their name itself. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but foolish lips will come to ruin. He who walks in integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will be found out. He who winks the eye causes grief and foolish lips will come to ruin. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Notice again the violence, concealing violence. He who walks in integrity, I love it, but he who perverts his way will be found out. Those who support feelings, you will be found out either now. I mean, in our like news cycle, everything's so fast, so fast. Controversy, craziness, everything's just like, ah, like hyperspeed, right? You feel it too? I feel it. You know, this story breaks and then, you know, there's one right on the heels. Not but a day later, half a day later. And there's so much corruption now. I mean, even with the, you know, Twitter stuff with Elon Musk. I mean, he buys Twitter and is just like shaking it out, like picked it up, you know, by its feet. And is just shaking out all the loose change and all the trash that's in the pockets. And this was just a few years ago, not like 20 years ago or 50 years ago. We're not talking about Watergate. Now it's come to light. We're talking about just in the last couple of years. Look at all the corruption, all the things that have been found out. This pastor, this big Eva guy, this, this gal, these people this politician, on and on and on and on. You will be found out. Likely very soon. Likely in a few years. But at the great white throne judgment, you most certainly will be found out. And if you're not washed by the blood of the Lamb, if you're not covered in Christ's righteousness, you're going to perish. You're going to eternal perdition. Destruction. Hell. Hades. Gehenna. That's your lot. And no amount of surgery, no amount of pills, no amount of vitamins and minerals and nutrients will save you. 
Jesus' blood alone. It's Christ and him alone that will save you. John 14, take heart with this, viewer. Take heart. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Oh, same words there. Why would Jesus say believe in God and me if he's not God? My father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you? Would I have told you that I go prepare a place for you? And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way that I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, here it is. This is great. Classic passage. Good evangelism passage. Good one to memorize. I am the way. I am the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known the Father also, my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. I love Philip. I'm going to keep going. Show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Have you been with me so long? You still don't see? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. You want a Trinitarian passage? Sorry. You want a Trinitarian passage? That's it. Right there. I kind of get in cycles and like kind of whipped up into the uh, stratosphere of different debates and different things uh, unintentionally. <clears throat> There's one video series. Uh, it's a channel. I got to comment on them uh, because it's been months and months and they're still producing videos. Uh, like the Bible is an idol uh, and the Bible is the Antichrist. And then there's another one that I found uh, that came up in conversation and the guy, it's basically, basically like Jehovah witness and like Mormonism <clears throat> kind of classic cult. You know, and of course this guy's pretending that he's the prophet. He's not saying he's a prophet. He's very, you know, very calm and collected, but you know, it's called like the restored. There's like the restored church. And then there's the, the church of God restored or restoration. Or, and it's like, well, which one's which one looks kind of like they're like Mennonite or like Amish up in Canada. And they get these weird looking beards. And then this other guy, you know, KJV only. Does the Bible really teach God's a trinity? You know, those types of things. I get whipped up in these. And then you think, well, maybe not. You know, maybe for a moment. What do you, well, let's hear this guy out. And then you remember passages like John 14. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I can't tell that to anybody. There's no way I could tell that to anyone. Why? Because I'm just a man. I'm just a human. I'm not God. I'm not God adding flesh. Only Jesus could do that. Why? Because Jesus added flesh. He added humanity to himself. This is why we celebrate Christmas. And not just a recent thing. It's not like it's like 90 AD or 80, 90. And it's only been a few decades since the ascension. And people are like, I don't know. First generation Christians are kind of gone. Maybe Jesus isn't God. Like we've dealt with this before, like centuries ago. <laughs> and people still come up. Because people don't know the Bibles, people don't walk in the truth, people don't trust in Christ. They're like, well, let's revisit this. What do, what do you got here? What's this? No, no, people, no. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Anyway, there's more. There's so many more. Point is, I want you to understand, be helped by this. I hope you are. Um, and if you are, go ahead and like and subscribe. I really do appreciate that. It helps me out, uh, helps the channel out. Um, I'm trying to get to 1,000, so if you have not subscribed, I don't want to say I'm begging, but I, I, I'd like you to, uh, st I'm strongly urging you to. That's free, right? So trying to get to 1,000. I'm at eight something right now. And um, that kind of opens up a few more doors for things on YouTube and the algorithm and all that. So anyway. That, uh, you can check out my website, richardthenry.com. Um, I write there periodically. I don't I do not do as much work as I'd like to uh, because life's busy. You're busy too. And again, I appreciate you spending some time with me, uh, whether you're watching this on the premiere or watching this later. Um, I do I do appreciate that. I, I try and do videos, new videos on uh, Fridays at least. And uh, of course, this is dropping today, Thursday. So I'm going to do another video tomorrow just because I'm trying to you know, play a little catch up. There's so much to talk about. 
So I'll have another video tomorrow on Friday, uh, December 9th. <clears throat> And I've got a separate channel. Uh, it's a second channel, Contra Talk, where I talk to people uh, about different issues. Um, men and women, pastors, writers, old and young, um, thinkers. I'm going to talk in January. I don't know when it'll drop, though, uh, about transhumanism. I've got a friend. He's getting his PhD in that. And, uh, yeah, there's some scary, crazy stuff. Uh, on the table already and coming down the pike. So look out for that. I'm hoping to talk to a number of high profile people uh, as well that one, I've got a conversation later on today that should come out pretty soon, uh, but I've got a number of backlog conversations as well, discussing different things. Anyway, so that's it. Um, nothing else really, I don't think, but like I said, drop a comment. Um, if this helped you, like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And until next time, the goal of this channel is to help you be against the world, but for it. <laughs>